Hi, in this Lightboard session, we're going to talk about runtime fabric at a high level and talk about the various parts that you need to understand. Now, the control plane plays an important role in still providing the management interface, but we need to set up some infrastructure as part of runtime fabric because it's running on your infrastructure. Now, the two parts to, two conceptual parts to this, there are controller and worker. Now, in reality, these will be multiple servers playing a role so that you have high availability in a production environment, but we're just going to represent them as two main boxes at the moment. So multiple nodes would be a part of this. Now, the controller provides the admin capabilities, so the stuff for coordinating, the deployment, the management, cluster control type stuff. So, and it's also responsible for load balancing capabilities. So as far as the distribution of requests to your different applications, that plays a role in the controller part of the infrastructure. Now, sitting off to the side, there is the, there is the control plane. And this being one of the runtime planes. So runtime fabric is one of the options for where the runtimes can live. And there is communication back up to the control plane so that when you need to do deployments or scale up, down, change, various things to do with your applications, that's still done through Runtime Manager. So as far as what goes on the worker, well, the concept that you can grasp with the way that Mule applications get deployed is a pod. So, so the concept on the worker is that we have a pod which can contain your Mule application running inside a Mule runtime. So to visualize that, we've got your, if you've got your app, and we have our Mule runtime, and that needs to run inside a pod. Now, there are other parts that run on a worker as part of the Docker and Kubernetes infrastructure, but this is the important part from our deployment of applications, because we're going to have one or more replications of this based on our needs for high availability. Now, on that point, let's talk about some of the things that you get with Runtime Fabric. So Runtime Fabric has, because it's got a load balancer mechanism, so the load balancer means that you get zero downtime deployments. So when we do a deploy through the control plane, so you, you have your ops people needing to do Ops need to do a deploy. They can script this, of course, but you could log into Runtime Manager, issue a request to do a deploy to the deployment target, which is the Runtime Fabric, and then it will coordinate the calls down through, through a secure channel here. So there is communication back and forth between the control plane and your controller. And then it coordinates the scripting of a new replication or a new pod getting created, depending on what you're trying to do from a deployment, scale up, scale down. So this is why we would call Runtime Fabric an iPaaS. So it is platform as a service, so it's provisionable. So you can get the ability to take an app and then not have to worry as much about the infrastructure because you've already set up the infrastructure and it's more a case of, how are you going to allocate your available resources? So that's what we're doing when we're creating one of these pods, is we're just allocating a certain amount of CPU and memory and getting the underlying Docker and Kubernetes to manage that infrastructure. So that's what we get with Runtime Fabric. Um, it's on your infrastructure. So this could be AWS, Azure, or in your own data center. So there are a bit more, there's flexibility in the way that you can deploy this because you get to pick where it goes. Whereas if you were going, say, to Cloud Hub, Cloud Hub is always going to be in AWS and it is a managed ecosystem by MuleSoft. So this gives you a bit more control over where that sits in your overall landscape. And those are the basics of 
runtime fabric and the, the key components, controller, worker, and some of the benefits that you get.